Monitor refresh rates and resolutions can often be a complete minefield, and often it is very hard to figure out which HDMI or DisplayPort variant is suitable with your monitor, and sometimes it leads to people being disappointed with their purchases of their PC monitor because their laptop or GPU or console can't support said resolution because of the port variant. To explain this, I've teamed up with AOC and Philips who've kindly sponsored this video, and to give you a complete guide as to which port version you need in order to achieve the right resolution and refresh rate that you're looking for. To make things even easier, there are video timestamps throughout this video, so you can skip to the appropriate section. Alternatively, watch on because this video is going to be very much detailed and informative and hopefully will provide you invaluable information that you can forever reference or indeed come back to, at least for the foreseeable future. Now before jumping in, I should mention that there are different display ports or HDMI variants. Now while I will be listing the different port variants depending on the resolution and refresh rate, what you'll have to do yourself is to check the monitor specs. Also it is worth bearing in mind that it's not just in terms of the monitor, it's to do with your GPU, your console or even your laptop. Here you will want to make sure that for example if you're connecting up a 1080p 144Hz monitor to a laptop which is very old so one of my gaming laptops has the HDMI 1.2 spec it will therefore mean it won't be able to achieve 1080p 144Hz because the HDMI spec variant on my laptop doesn't support that. So while the monitor does, my laptop doesn't and therefore limits in terms of what I can do. And the reason behind that, it's all to do with bandwidth and therefore the amount of information that can be transmitted. The higher the refresh rate, the more bandwidth is required, the bigger the resolution and of course that also includes the bandwidth as well. So ultimately these different spec variants are all to do with the different bandwidth supports and you just have to make sure that the entire chain from even your cable to your source device to your monitor all have the same sort of compatibility for you to achieve the resolution or refresh rate that you're seeking. So we're gonna kick off this video and talk about 1080p. The reason I haven't taken 720p or below resolutions is purely because most monitors nowadays are 1080p or above. Now to reach 60 hertz, you will need HDMI 1.2 or DisplayPort 1.2. Move over to 75 5 hertz at 1080p, you're going to need HDMI 1.4 or DisplayPort 1.2. If you want to take things further and go to 240 hertz, more of the eSports scene in this respect, you'll need HDMI 2.0 or DisplayPort 1.2. Next up we've got 1440p, which I would say is the sweet spot when it comes to gaming or indeed browsing the web. Now if you want to get 60 hertz to 75 hertz, you'll need HDMI 1.4 or DisplayPort 1.2. If we move over to 120 hertz to 144 hertz, which in my opinion is the perfect gaming sweet spot, you're looking at HDMI 2.0 or DisplayPort 1.2. Then we take things a little bit further and go to 165 hertz, and here you'll need HDMI 2.1 or DisplayPort 1.2. Taking things even further, You've got 240 hertz at 1440p and you've got HDMI 2.1 spec or the DisplayPort 1.4 spec that you'll need to use. Next up we've got UHD or 4K for short, at least the consumer 4K variant. Here to reach 30 hertz, which is pretty much not really used nowadays but still maybe a reference point for older monitors, you'll need HDMI 1.4 or DisplayPort 1.2. Going up to 60 hertz, which is much more common at 4K, you need HDMI 2.0 or DisplayPort 1.2. Then we move to 4K 120Hz, which might be a little bit of a sweet spot for console gamers. Here you'll need HDMI 2.1 or DisplayPort 1.4, which obviously wouldn't be achievable via console. Here, if you want 4K 144Hz, however, it gets a little bit confusing because you can achieve this via a singular HDMI 2.1 port or a singular DisplayPort 2.0 cable and, and spec. However, for most people, you'll be using a dual DisplayPort 1.4 input 
to achieve 4K at 144 Hz without any chroma subsampling. As for 4K 240 Hz, you need HDMI 2.1 and this will potentially be using Display Stream Compression, DSC for short, or you'll need DisplayPort 2.0. Next up we get into 5K resolution and here it's truthfully made for most editors out there because the 5K monitors are not really sort of gaming centric. Here to achieve 30 Hz you need HDMI 2.0 or DisplayPort 1.2. If you want 60 Hz, that moves up to HDMI 2.1 or DisplayPort 1.4. And if you want 5K 144 Hz, you'll need HDMI 2.1 with DSC or DP at 2.0. And finally, at the time of making this video, 8K is kind of a thing right now. Although I can see it's very limited even in terms of how much it would cost. But if you want 8K at 30 Hz, you'll need HDMI 2.1 or DisplayPort 1.4. Alternatively, if you go to 8K 85 Hz, you'll need HDMI 2.1 with DSC or DisplayPort 2.0. Now, another thing I do want to mention is also chroma subsampling. Now, for those people who are aware of it, they'll know that I excluded some of the HDMI or DisplayPort variants in my list, depending on the refresh rate and resolution. The only exclusion to that was the 4K 144Hz spec, which I felt was worth mentioning because that is somewhat of a more common occurrence. Now, the reason I've excluded this in terms of the resolution and refresh rates is because it can, be, can get a little bit confusing confusing depending on the spec variant and the resolutions and therefore for most consumers you will not want to have a degraded degraded color um, accuracy or even um, experience on your monitor in order to achieve potentially a higher refresh rate or resolution. Of course you might disagree with me so do let me know in the comments below. So this pretty much concludes my video and hopefully this has been useful and a bit educational for you guys as much as it's been for me as well. Sometimes it's quite nice to know what the future might hold with different DisplayPort or HDMI specs. Now if you did like this video, give it a like, subscribe to see more and of course favor and share for me to continue delivering informative videos. Alright guys, I've been totally dubbed, take care and bye bye.